Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Red Black or Rakdos Aristocrat deck, which is an aggressive creature deck with built-in sacrifice synergies, and it got a big new upgrade in M20 with the addition of Chandra Acolyte of Flame, which can let us generate two 1-1 red elemental creature tokens with haste that get sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step, which has a ton of synergy in this deck, since we are a deck with uh, Priest of Forgotten Gods, which requires us to sacrifice two other creatures for us to use the ability, which is quite powerful since then each opponent loses two life and has to sacrifice a creature, we get to add double black to our mana pool and draw a card. So the Priest requiring two creatures to be sacrificed means that uh, Chandra synergizes greatly with the Priest, since we get to curve turn two Priest into a turn three Chandra, make two 1-1 one, one elemental tokens that we can attack with potentially and then still, before they go away, sacrifice to the priest to make the opponent sacrifice a creature and get ahead with the ability. So great synergy between the two. And then we've got a bunch more synergies between all these creatures, one being Mayhem Devil, which says whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. So not only when the opponent sacrifices a permanent, with a priest for example, does Mayhem Devil deal one damage, but also if we sacrifice a permanent, so if we sacrifice some permanence to the priest, the Mayhem Devil triggers. If the 1-1 one, one elemental tokens by themselves at the end of turn get sacrificed to Chandra's ability, those also count for Mayhem Devil. So it can kind of machine gun down all the one toughness creatures on the opponent's side. So while Mayhem Devil deals with the smaller creatures on the opponent's side, Priest of Forgotten Gods can take care of the big stuff once the small creatures are gone, since the ability from the Mayhem Devil will resolve before the ability from the priest. So we can take care of the small stuff before the opponent has to sacrifice their bigger creature. So a ton of built-in synergy here and of course we haven't even touched upon some of the nice aggressive creatures in this deck like all the one drops dreadhorde butcher and of course judith pumping the team so just a very nice synergistic deck that we'll go over here starting with the one drops where we have the full play set of gutter bones one mana for a two one that enters the battlefield tapped and for one on the black we can return gutter bones from our graveyard to our hand if the opponent lost a life this turn so that also synergizes greatly with priest of forgotten gods since when we activate the priest the opponent ends up losing two life we also get to make double black mana we can use that two mana to get back gutter bones from the graveyard to our hand so we can then replay it and have more sacrifice fodder for the priest's ability and also Otherwise, just a 2-1 creature for 1 mana that can apply a bit of pressure is quite nice. Then we also have the full playset of Fanatical Firebrand, 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one with haste. We can tap and sacrifice it to deal 1 damage to any target. And if we have a Mayhem Devil in play, we get to deal 2 damage, so it gets even better. And then we also have two copies of Grim Initiate, an addition from War of the Spark as a 1-1 one, one creature with First Strike, that when it dies gets to a mass 1, so we get another 1-1 one, one zombie creature token, so that's more sacrifice fodder for the priest. And then one of the few non-creature spells in the deck is Shock, dealing 2 damage to any target at instant speed for 1 mana, and we can also get it back from the graveyard with Chandra's minus 2 ability. We're not taking full advantage of Chandra's minus 2 in the deck. If we were playing in Buster 3, for example, we could have a bunch of instants and sorceries in the sideboard that we can get back with Chandra, like the Ressus and more removal spells but uh, for this best of one version of the deck we're mostly just using Chandra's second zero ability and every now and then we might get back a shock to close out the game then at 2 mana we've got the full play set of Priests of Forgotten Gods, of course one of the centerpieces of the deck, and if we're playing against an opponent that has trouble removing the Priest and they're playing a creature deck, we will usually win the game pretty easily. Then we also have two copies of Rick's Manny Reveler, which we can play out as a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, that when it enters the battlefield makes us discard a card and then draw a card, so it can kind of filter our draw, maybe discarding an additional copy of Chandra or Judith, which are legendary, or just a land if we're flooding out. But if we can spectacle the Rick's Manny Reveler if we're on empty, for 4 mana now we get to discard our entire hand, which often will just be empty, and then draw three fresh cards. So that's a great way to refuel, and we've got a lot of ways to help us enable Spectacle between cards like Fanatical Firebrand, Shock, of course Priest, if that's active, and Chandra, so it's usually not too difficult to enable Spectacle in this deck. And then our final 2-drop is Dreadhorde Butcher, 2 mana for a 1-1 one, one creature with haste, that when it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and when the Butcher dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So playing out a turn 2 Dreadhorde Butcher on an empty board feels great, as it will start growing and getting out of hand very quickly, and of course once we sacrifice it to something like a Priest, it still gets to deal a ton of damage to any target, so great at uh, kind of closing out 
out the game and making it tricky for the opponent to attack since they kind of need to keep something back on defense to block the butcher so just a nightmare for the opponent to deal with if we can get it out early and the fact that the butcher also grows when dealing damage to opposing planeswalkers is a pretty big departure from these types of effects which usually only apply when they deal damage to players and not planeswalkers so the butcher is still great at finishing off low loyalty planeswalkers like the fairies for example that have minus but we've got a lot of ways to deal with lo loyalty planeswalkers between all the haste creatures like firebrand butcher and the elemental tokens from chandra so those usually aren't a big issue so overall the butcher is great in the deck especially on turn two and later in the game it's still kind of a glorified footline fiend and then at three mana we've got three copies of judith a 2-2 legendary creature giving other creatures we control plus one plus oh and whenever a non-token creature we control dies, Judith deals 1 damage to any target, so works great with kind of the aggro plan of the deck. Pumping the elemental tokens from Chandra also makes it more difficult for the opponent to block them. It doesn't synergize with the tokens dying, as well as the Mayhem Devil does, since it only triggers off non-token creatures dying, but still great to curve a bunch of 1-drops into a Judith and start attacking. And of course, if we sacrifice some of our non-token creatures, like Gutter Bones, Firebrand or Initiate, to something like a Priest, then a Judith will still trigger, help us take out those one toughness creatures before the ability from the priest resolves again kind of filling the same role as a mayhem devil in clearing the small stuff so the priest can get to the juicy bits and then uh, our final three drops here we've got the full playset of mayhem devil which of course is great a ton of built-in synergy in the deck also great against opposing scapeshift decks because if they sacrifice a whole bunch of lands for a big scapeshift to make a bunch of zombie tokens with field of the dead the devil will deal one damage for each sacrificed land which often means the opponent simply can't cast scapeshift without dying and then of course the full playset of Chandra and Kaline of Flame, which is great in the deck with Devil and Priest. And then last but not least, we have two copies of God Eternal Bontu, which is a great way for us to refuel, much like the Rixmati Reveler. We get access to a 5-mana, five 5-6 five, legendary zombie god with Menace. And when Bontu enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice any number of other permanents and then draw that many cards. So we can just sacrifice a bunch of lands to help us find more action if we're flooding out. And if we have a Mayhem Devil in play and play Bontu, we can kind of do the reverse scape shift where we just sacrifice all our lands to burn out the opponent and to win the game on the spot. So that's also great synergy between the two. And then Bontu also has the God Eternal clause here, in that when uh, Bontu dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, we can put it into our library third from the top, so we can maybe draw it again. And then the mana base is pretty simple, 6 swamps, 9 mountains, 4 blood crypts and 4 dragon skull summits. And something else important to point out is that most of the deck will stay after rotation. The only card the deck loses after rotation is Fanatical Firebrand, which we can easily replace with more copies of Grim Initiate or Footlight Fiend at one mana. And then in the mana base we lose Dragon Skull Summit, but I'm sure that we'll get some other dual land to replace it with. So if you feel like investing in it, it's not gonna go to waste. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got turn 2 Priest to potentially turn 3 Chandra, just need a land. So I think we'll keep. Got the Shock as early interaction. And up against a turn 1 Hallowed Fountain. Alright, picked up a turn 1 play. So it could be up against Asper, could be the Scapeshift deck. Asper confirmed. Alright, it's the Asper Hero version. So Priest is not super likely to survive, we could just shock the hero right away before they start making 1-1s, one which is reasonable. I think I'll play it slow here. If I was guaranteed to play Chandra next turn, I might play the Priest, but since we're not even guaranteed to do so, I would rather just get rid of this hero b while we can. Maybe clear a path for the Butcher before they make a 1-1 one -one token. Thought Erasure is going to pick apart our hands. Might take the Butcher, might take the Priest, might take the Chandra. Takes the Butcher, which is the more immediate threat. And we did find the land. So, I could play the Priest, hope it survives and then get the Chandra engine going. Or I can just play Chandra right away and then play Mayhem Devil plus Chandra to deal a ton of damage. And uh, Chandra's gonna be more difficult for the opponent to remove next turn. I kind of like that idea. And I can always get back the shock from the graveyard if that's something we need. Not our hero. Alright, so looks like a pretty straightforward Mayhem Devil. I guess I even get to attack with the elementals from Chandra. 
since even if they block one of them, I'm still gonna have enough to finish off the hero. So hero down. Firebrand in play with the Mayhem Devil also representing two damage here. I'm sure the Mayhem Devil will be answered soon, but yeah, opponent just packs it in. So our opponent had a pretty creature-heavy draw in their Asper deck, and our deck happens to be pretty good against creatures. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, Initiate into Priest, so we just need one more creature for Priest to be functional, and Initiate plays well with the Priest, giving us multiple creatures to sacrifice, so I think this is a keeper. Alright, up against the Black-White Vampires. So what's the play here? I think I just want to keep up Shock to potentially kill a Legion Lieutenant if they play that next turn. And if they don't, I might just Shock the Conquistador anyway. And then I can go turn 2 Priest, turn 3 Initiate plus Firebrand to do some stuff. So we'll see here whether they have the Lieutenant or not. Alright, no Lieutenant. I think I Shock the Conquistador anyway. Since with the Priest, if we're going to use this as our uh, source of repeatable removal, we kind of need to get past the small creatures before we get to the better creatures anyway. And Dreadhorde Butcher. Uh, I think we just play the Priest here. And then next turn we can maybe play Butcher plus Initiate, and then Butcher can take out a One Toughness creature. And then Priest can maybe... Get something else. Ooh, Legion Sand, that's unfortunate. Vampire deck has a few removal spells in the main deck. Usually like one or two Legion Sands, maybe a Mortify or two. So them having the answer for Priest is unfortunate. Of course, uh, Soren could have also dealt three damage, although they would have been unlikely to want to sacrifice a Vanguard. I could just Firebrand kill Aspirant and then connect with a Butcher, that seems fine. Alternatively, if I play the Devil before the Firebrand, the Firebrand plus Devil could deal 1 to Aspirant, 1 to Vanguard, which is 4 more damage essentially if they want to keep it alive. And if they play a Legion Lieutenant, then Firebrand plus Devil could also deal 2 damage. So maybe I want to save that, and then for now just play the Devil itself. It's going to be a Sanctum Seeker. Vanguard can attack. Take three. Seeker does line up pretty well here, as it can block our Devil as well. So now what? I could still play Firebrand first, attack with the Mayhem Devil. If they block with Sanctum Seeker, I get to take out Aspirant and Sanctum Seeker on the way out here. I think that's going to be the play here. Let's attack and see what happens. Opponent does go for the trade. Alright. Don't think I want to pay 2 to play the Butcher, so I'll go Initiate plus Gutter Bones instead. Alright. So opponent's got one card in hand, but if it's... Something like a Champion of Dusk, they could refuel. Instead they were holding on to Legion Lieutenant, so now the Vanguard does have a good attack. That's too bad. Uh, can I afford to take four? Probably. Alright, Judith is perfect. So, can I afford to attack with the Gutter Bones, for example? I think so. Do need to start pressuring them at some points. I leave the Grim Initiate back as a good blocker. Forcing the opponent to pay for with a Vanguard, making another zombie token. So what are we hoping to draw? Priest, of course, would be pretty high up on our list. Vanguard does attack.
And Soren second main. Sacrifices the lieutenant to kill Judith. Alright. Um, guess we'll deal one to Soren since I can't imagine beating Soren if he stays in play. And then we have just enough to kill Soren here with our hasty butcher. Which will still pick up a plus one plus one counter. And I think I should play my land in case of a Bontu. So I can still play a lands I draw with Bontu and potentially a one drop. So we're down to six. Opponent might be holding a bunch of Champion of Dusks in their hand that they're unable to cast. So we do want to end the game before they can deploy those. So this is a pretty tricky spot. I think I'm going to leave back both the Firebrand and the 1-1 token. So that I'm not that to removal spell plus a Dante Vanguard connecting and our opponent then playing a Surin to deal 3 damage. So we have a bit of extra insurance there. Mortify for the Butcher. Try and take out Vanguard. This essentially deals 4 damage instead of 2. Play Firebrand. Cast down. I guess I'll target the Vanguard and not block with the 1-1 one -one then. So our opponent had a pretty removal heavy draw here between the cast down, legions and mortify. Take three, down to three. If we draw a hasty creature or burn spell we could win. Well, opponent did have another blocker, so not quite. So firebrand can straight up kill Adanto Vanguard since they can't afford to pay four. So I guess that means I can afford to attack with both if they take it or that to the firebrand. And then I also get to return the gutter bones if uh, they trade there. That also makes sense, we don't get to return the gutter bones, but Firebrand trades for Vanguard. So do I kill the Vanguard now? Is there any point in waiting? I guess I'll wait here. Can't think of a reason for me to have to do it right away. Surin, sure. We can wait for them to plus, and if they decide to deal 3 damage, we can still respond by sacrificing the Firebrand, killing Adanto Vanguard. Potent can't pay the 4 life. Vanguard dies and Gutterbones kills them next turn. Alright, sweet, so very close game here. Definitely came down to the wire. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn 1 Gutterbones, turn 2 Raveler. Not sure what I'm discarding. Turn 3. Probably Chandra before Judith. Up against turn one Breeding Pool. Right, I guess I'm okay discarding the initiate here. So still not sure if I'm playing Chandra or Judith here. Blue green, turn to Leafkin Druid. So, some sort of uh, elemental or ramp deck. Picked up a Firebrand. I guess it makes sense to play Judith here since that allows us to get past the uh, 3 toughness blocker. Take two from the Blood Crypt there in case we pick up another Raveler so I can discard the Swamp since I do need double red for Chandra. Also, if I draw a mountain, I could play both Chandra and Firebrand next turn. Opponent with a Cloudkin Seer. I could play Firebrand, sacrifice it, dealing one to the Seer, one to the Druid. So Judith can also attack past the Druid, which deals one more damage, essentially. Otherwise, I would get to block one of my other creatures with a Seer, which seems bad. And then I still get to play Initiate. Alternatively, I can just play Chandra. I think the play here is Firebrand kills Seer. And I also get to deal one damage to the Druids. 
so that uh, they can't block the Judith, essentially. Risen Reef into Lanaralves. Lots of one toughness creatures for us to potentially kill. So, yeah, let's play Chandra, make two tokens. And if we attack with everyone, our opponent's gonna be dead. Three blockers versus six two powered attackers at least. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Unable to play the turn one gutter bones. But otherwise, probably still a keepable hand. Definitely playing the Dragon Skull in case we draw a Swamp, we get to play both Gutter Bones next turn. Looks like a Lanner Elves or a Pelt Collector. Alright. Did pick up the Swamp. Probably fine to play both Gutter Bones still. I'll still be able to shock the Pelt Collector if it grows once, and can't imagine it growing twice. It's gonna be a Crawl Harpooner. Alright. So I've got a few options. I think one Gutter Bones attacks and the other one stays back. And I'm probably gonna end up killing the Pelt Collector. Their opponent on a red green stompy deck here. Not a pelt collector. Alright, they've got a lot of those. And a red horde butcher. We do have Chandra plus Mayhem Devil, which is pretty strong. Although the pelt collectors are probably going to grow next turn to get out of range. But I think we still attack for two and then play Devil. Don't really want to play Chandra since she could uh, die to the two Pelt Collectors pretty easily. Devil threatens to block Pelt Collector, even if it grows once. 4 4 Spellbreaker. Alright, so Chandra plus Devil can take out one of the Pelt Collectors, but then Chandra is also going to be threatened on the way back by the Spellbreaker. Although, then again, we could. Double block it and then still kill it, so I think I still like Chandra here. Anyone need a fire started? No? Too bad. Don't worry. I brought company. No attacks. I could have also attacked first with the gutter bones if they block with the spellbreaker. Chandra can finish off spellbreaker, but then both belt collectors become three threes. So we'll see what happens. Close game. We've got a Bonto in hand, which plays great with the Mayhem Devil as well. So that's going to be pretty key. Null hide. All right. Would love to draw into a priest, since that's great against these types of uh, removal light creature decks. Does send everyone at Chandra, so I can double block Spellbreaker. And then Chandra still survives. And then if I draw lands. Uh, Bontu plus Chandra is pretty nice. Alternatively, I can let Chandra die to keep Devil plus Bontu. Think I'm okay killing the Spellbreaker. And losing the Devil in the hopes of drawing a land for Bontu next turn with Chandra. Grim initiate instead. Alright. So, I guess we'll make some elementals, attack and get back some gutter bones from the graveyard. Not super exciting, but... I 
Is it better to just get back one gutter bones, play gutter bones plus initiate? I guess so. That way if we do draw the land for Bontu, I can have more creatures in play to sacrifice. And the initiate chum blocking the Nullhide Ferox is also pretty good here. So they might ignore Chandra, just go face. Or they might send the Pelt Collector, which tramples. Another Spellbreaker, alright. With haste. So we'll see whether they ignore Chandra or take her out. Spellbreaker also tramples. And I'll chum the Ferox. Yeah, turn two priest would have uh, made a huge difference this game. Still no land for Bontu. We're falling further and further behind on board. I guess playing Judith is still fine. It means the gutter bones can trade for even a pelt collector. Uh oh, they drew into maybe a Domri or Domri's ambush. I guess Lanarals is the best we can do. I'm gonna have to chump and take eight. Or I can double block, but then I'm taking eleven plus one twelve down to two. Don't think I can win from that spot. land, but it's a Blood Crypt. I guess I'm still alive, technically. Bontu goes in front of Pelt Collector, Gutter Bones jumps Ferox, I fall to one if they attack with all. I guess that's the play. I think I sacrifice three lands here. Not the best set of draws. Yeah, Priest would have been pretty good in this matchup. So we're hanging on to dear life. Well, there's a Priest. Could still be in time to save us here. Bontu can block Spellbreaker and then Butcher can chump Ferox. Can't afford to play the priest unless I chump with her, which I guess I could technically do. Opponent might not want to sacrifice a spellbreaker just to make us sack the priest, but I think priest is just too important here, so I'm just gonna play the butcher instead. And then hopefully we can draw into more creatures we can play alongside priest, so we have a chump blocker for Ferox. If they draw a haste creature, we're dead. And yeah, another spellbreaker will do it. Alright, so we got pretty close to stabilizing here, actually. But uh, they had just enough to get across. Needed to draw a priest a little bit sooner. Alright, GG's. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, we're missing a 2-drop, but overall a reasonable hand. Turn 1 score spitter, so we're up against the Cavalcade, the red deck here. So let's think. We want to keep answers for Chandra Spitfire if uh, possible. Which means like Firebrand plus Shock could kill it. Um, also don't want to take infinite damage from the score spitter. I guess for now I'll play Mountain plus Firebrand and see what our opponent does. Opponent about to move to combat. I think I'll take the damage from the Spitter, since if I can wait to play Mayhem Devil or Judith before sacking Firebrand, that's better. If they had played Cavalcade, then I would have uh, killed it here. Hmm. 
another spitter. Anything else? Third spitter. Another firebrand. Well, now I'm probably gonna shock one of them. But I can wait. And see what they do. Put in moves to combat right away. I think I can shock one and then take damage from the other ones. And then I get to save the firebrands to go with Devil and Judith to get an additional damage. Can probably afford to take four. Light up the stage, find Spitter and Spitfire. Do they have the third land? They do, so next turn we can expect the Spitfire and Firebrand. Alright. Guess I'll play the Devil. And pass a turn. Also, if they sacrifice a Firebrand now, the Devil also deals one damage, so they might have wanted to sack Firebrand first. So Firebrand's going after Mayhem Devil, we'll take out a Spitter. They might have Shock here to take out the Devil, but then they might be unable to play the Spitfire. Unless they still have another land in hand. So we get to take out both spitters. Do they have land for Spitfire? Just another Firebrand. Alright. So as the dust settles, we're left with a Judith and a couple extra lands. So it's not too bad. The Mayhem Devil working off the opponent's Firebrands is pretty big. Alright. Well, bit of an early concession from the opponent, but they were pretty far behind. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice aggressive hand here. We're kind of lacking some of our heavy hitters, but being on the play with a turn to butcher can make a lot of hands look a lot better. So I think I'm gutter bonesing turn one over Firebrand. Applies a little bit more pressure. Turn 3 Mayhem Devil looking good. And one of the cards that's very good against her deck that would actually be all that uh, threatening here is Crab the Carnarium since the Butcher and the Devil don't die to it. The fairy resets Butcher. And there's Judith, so are we close to just killing our opponent here? So I think the play here might just be to go face with everyone. The drawback of not killing the fairy is that they can instant speed, cast a sweeper next turn potentially, but this way I'm dealing uh, 9 damage, putting them to 4. So then, if they cast a Sweeper, Judith just kills them. Alright, they just have a Deputy of Detention, should be able to beat that. And her opponent scoops it up. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, with a reasonable enough hand that we can keep. Can play the Gutter Bones turn 1, hoping to draw into, I guess, Priests is usually the card. And well, speak of the Devil. 
Sweet, so might get to live the dream of turn 2 priest into a turn 3 Chandra. Although turn 1 island could imply a counterspell heavy deck. That might mess with that. Could have also decided to keep up shock in case we fear Spectral Sailor into Curious Obsession plus Dive Down shenanigans. Instead it's an Opts, so could still be the blue-green flash deck. Eh, Blue-black instead. Blue-black probably means a priest is not gonna survive for long. Opponent with a Legion's End. Still gonna play the priest here though. So presumably a control deck where the sacrifice a creature part on the priest is not gonna be too impactful. It's gonna be a cast down to answer her. Chandra's still okay here, applying a bit of pressure, difficult to answer. And if we ever get to Bontu, we can sacrifice those two elementals for two extra cards as well. Bone says go. Say hi to my fiery friends. I think I'm fine playing Judith. Alternatively, I could... Reveler, discarding something, and then play Gutter Bones as well. Save the Judith. I think I want to save Reveler for Spectacle. Although, I guess Reveler and Bonto are a bit at odds with each other. So maybe I should not play Judith yet. Since if they just have a spot removal for Judith here, it's not the best. And then I'll play Reveler. Discard Shock, which is probably the least important card. Opponent did nothing with 4 mana. Was hoping to pick up some lands to work towards Bontu. It's gonna be Thought Erasure. Probably taking Bontu. Leaves us with double Judith. So Thought Erasure could have been a reason to wait on the Reveler for Spectacle in case they take the Bontu. But now we're just gonna smash. Hey, Alright, opponent is down to 6. And if they have a Sweeper, then Judith could do some more damage. Although Cry Exiles, it doesn't trigger Judith. So that's not exactly what we were hoping for, but... Uh, get to follow up with more hasty creatures, so if they don't have anything, they're just dead. Alright, so we even managed to survive a Cry of the Carnarium, which uh, before the addition of Chandra was even more backbreaking. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we do potentially have a very powerful hand here. Turn 1 Firebrand, turn 2 Priest into a turn 3 Chandra, so that's kind of the dream. Hopefully Priest survives. And ideally we're up against a creature deck. Turn 1 Forest is promising into a Lanner Elves. Alright, we're gonna be in business here. Still gonna kill the Lanner Elves, don't wanna take any risks there. Play Priests. And hopefully they just run out of creature. Turn to Troll. This is perfect. Opponent might be on the Mono Green Stompy deck with a bunch of Hexproof creatures. But of course uh, Priest doesn't care. So this should be a pretty good matchup for us if we get to stick a turn to Priest. And yep. That's pretty much game. Priest into Chandra. Opponent has to sacrifice the next creature they play for the rest of the game. Alright, well, we finally got to assemble Priest plus Chandra, took us a while and uh, didn't get to play much with that interaction, but that is just a very strong synergy that if you ever get to assemble it, usually wins you the game and our opponent fully realized that. Alright, so that's going to do it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.